So thanks, Camilla, for the uh, kind introduction and uh, also inviting me here to speak on this topic, which is uh, very close to my heart, personally, being an engineer at heart, but also uh, from the best perspective of my company, TESI, obviously deep tech investments representing a core uh, element of our investment strategy, both on the uh, fund investment side as an LP, um, but also as a direct co-investor in the space. So I kind of structured my presentation around a series of claims related to deep tech, which uh, combined should hopefully paint a picture of the attractiveness of the asset class from, from the LP perspective. Um, and I'll start um, with the first one, which should be a kind of non-controversial in a sense uh, regarding the market size. So what I'm saying is that market size is not really the limiting factor in, in deep tech investments. If we think essentially what deep tech companies are doing, they are solving big fundamental global issues around healthcare, uh, around sustainability, around radically transforming industries. And uh, so there's clear impact angle as well. Uh, and the impact can be positive in, in a direct sense. If you think about BioNTech in, in the COVID vaccines or, or indirect, if you think of quantum technologies uh, in uh, enabling radical uh, effectiveness of, of, of material sciences, et, et cetera. So, so if you think of this, it kind of becomes obvious that the size of the opportunities relative to where we are today is, is immense. And if you take that as a fact, it kind of uh, is clear that, you know, market size is not the bottleneck, but it's more other things relating to talent, business model execution and uh, supply of capital that become the critical success factors in, in making the deep tech investment successful. I'm digging in a bit deeper into the business execution as well as the capital supply uh, aspects, uh, starting with this. So I'm saying that the risk return profile of, of European deep tech is improving. Now, when, when US LPs have discussions with uh, potential GPs uh, around their deep tech investment strategies, I'm pretty sure that Kind of the standard questions on, on the due diligence list are related to high capital requirements, uh, long development cycles in terms of how uh, long it takes these companies to be developing in, into commercial successes. And this is, of course, a valid question because uh, in deep tech or deep tech companies notoriously have been uh, requiring a lot of capital and time to develop. But we are seeing clear improvements in this area. And what we are doing uh, at TESI uh, is that we are kind of building our own capabilities of, of keeping track of, of core investment sectors, deep tech being, being one of them. Uh, so we are investing into our own data assets, uh, kind of building these data models, combining uh, both public as well as proprietary data sources by which we can then track uh, the development of the sector and individual companies in terms of financial development, in terms of the capital fundraising that, that these companies do uh, per each sec subsector of, of deep tech. So bearing in mind that it's still a kind of a nascent and in a way small data set of, of 60 Finnish venture-backed companies, uh, if, if we look at this picture in, in a couple of years' time, I'm sure it will look even, even more compelling. But I think already now we are seeing some patterns that uh, we think are quite promising. So. First of all, of course, you have more companies getting founded and funded, which is good for the uh, VCs in the space. So there's more deal flow, but perhaps more, even more interestingly, if you look at this time aspect, we are seeing shortening time to revenues and kind of the velocity has improved in, in the space. You can think of many factors that have contributed to this, like the, the better availability of, of uh, platform technologies, cloud computing, uh, open source technologies, so that these companies are better and in a more time efficient way, able to develop their products to a uh, commercial scale. And, and why is this important? I mean, of course, for early stage deep tech companies, they need to demonstrate traction at some point to be able to raise later uh, add on funding rounds. Uh, speaking of which, if we look at the capital supply side, this is also getting stronger. So traditionally, deep tech companies have been funded by you could say three types of investors. You have the VCs, of course, uh, you have the corporates, and then you have the government. You might have added SPACs on the list based on recent developments as well. Um, but if we look at the venture fund side, so 
according to a recent report by uh, Deal Room and Sifted, which is a great report, uh, deep tech as of now represents a quarter of in European VC investment volumes, and, and the trend is growing. Uh, same thing on the corporate side. So in Europe, we have uh, globally leading companies, especially in automotive, in pharma, and according to CB Insights, where again, have seen a record uh, year in terms of CVC funding into uh, European companies. And as, as we know, corporate VC is an essential important part of the formula when the uh, deep tech companies are building their funding rounds. And thirdly, you have the government, I'm sure you know, uh, of, of the ambition plans with regards to the Horizon Europe investing 100 billion uh, into research and innovation over, over seven years. You also have multiple national R&D organizations kind of uh, breaching any remaining investment gaps. So kind of taking all this together, what we are seeing is that these kind of three different types of investors are playing together in, in a much more uh, fruitful, fruitful way uh, and, and uh, kind of building this um, funding rounds, which is, is important in terms of securing critical mass in supply of capital. If you think of this from the uh, perspective of an early stage VC, what it enables is that you can build your syndicates uh, better. You can also reduce risk on a portfolio level by avoiding, let's say, overexposure into, into single assets or uh, more effectively planning for your uh, follow-on funding reserves. Um, whereas on, on the systemic side, this kind of notion of, of too much capital chasing too few deals due to the size of the opportunity that is huge, I'm, I'm not really seeing that kind of risk as, as being very relevant at this point. And this, of course, should converge towards the financial returns, which we also see that are emerging and, and getting uh, better, at least uh, at this stage. So it was quite impressive uh, from the same deal room report to spot that uh, if you look at the combined value of, of European deep tech companies founded since 2000, uh, this value is already almost 200 billion and, and it has grown fivefold in, in, in five years. Obviously driven by some impressive flagship companies that are, that are listed um, on the slide. Now, of course, the LPs might question that, you know, this is still unrealized value development, which is mostly is we have, we have seen a number of, of fair exits, but I, I, I believe the blockbuster exits still haven't happened. There's this notion and perhaps fear of, of too early exits in the space. Uh, just think of what DeepMind might be valued at this time uh, rather than seven years ago. But again, this is something that we can mitigate through having more, let's say, capital available in, in the later stages. And then on a kind of a more local, uh, smaller scale, if we look at our own direct co-investment portfolio, uh, being invested in the deep tech sector for many, many years, mostly actually in, in hardware. If you look at, look at this group of companies, uh, it's currently standing at uh, a bit over 2x with a fair bit of that realized already. So taking all this and especially this impressive 200 billion figure, I think that leads us to conclude and kind of set an ambition level that we are seeing really European deep tech being at an inflection point. And we have an opportunity to build over 1 trillion in value by the end of the decade. Thank you.